Today's video, I'm passing over to Dario De Silva, who will dive into LogSeek's brand new feature, Whiteboards. Obsidian added a recent feature called Canvas, which is super similar. If you want to see a video about that, you can find it here. But this video will dive into everything you need to know about getting started with this feature. Now, Dario runs a fantastic LogSeek course, which dives much further into this, mastering the entirety of LogSeek. You can find that linked below. If you want to support the link, that will also support Keep Productive as well. So a big thank you to Dario and feel free to take over and dive into whiteboards in LogSeek. Hello everyone, my name is Dario and I run the YouTube channel One Stuttering Mind. And on that channel, I look at how you can use LogSeek as a tool for personal knowledge management and indirectly, hopefully, improve your well-being just a little bit. Francesco has very kindly offered me to come back onto the channel to look at a new feature inside LogSeek. I was on the Keep Productive channel about six months ago with a deep dive beginner's tour into LogSeek, but since then, the software has continued to improve and they now have a whiteboarding feature. So in this video, I'm going to look at the whiteboarding feature, look at what it can do for you and how you can implement it and just a couple of ideas for you as well. Just a quick disclaimer, it's currently in beta development mode, which means that it's only available to backers and sponsors who have sponsored LogSeek via their open collective page. Eventually the whiteboards will be freely available to all users, but at the moment you have to be contributing above $5 per month. Okay, so with that, let's get into the whiteboarding feature. As is my style, I'd like to use the whiteboarding feature to show you how the whiteboarding feature works. So this is my LogSeq whiteboard introduction for Keep Productive. And I'm gonna be looking at a few things today. I'm gonna to be looking at what this whiteboard feature is, how it works, how do I get whiteboard set up? How do I drive this thing? Meaning how do I navigate, etc. What can I create slash bring in? what I can use it for, and then my verdict on the whiteboard. So diving in here, I'll look at the UX elements just now, but what is the whiteboard feature? The whiteboard is a virtual whiteboard, as the name says, which is basically a canvas that allows you to integrate your existing LogSeq information into a visual interface. And this allows you to visually organize your information or spatially organize your information, and you can do it with a whole bunch of different things, blocks, pages, text, embedded content, and I'm gonna look at that a little bit later. Now, why it's useful is that it's helpful in the sense-making process, that you are not restrained to just linear text, but you can move things around and scribble and work with different blocks and different elements, all in the same visual interface. Now, it's important to state that it's not a competitor to Miro or Lucidchart, if you're familiar with some of those drawing programs, at least not yet, maybe it will be in the future, but it really is just a way to integrate your text-based information and some pictures into this visual interface and you can move things around. So, for instance, all of these blocks over here, which I've scrolled at to the right, are all simply blocks in my LogSeq whiteboard introduction page. So if I open this page up, and I'll, again, I'll get there now, you can see there that I've got the full script over here and I've basically drag these blocks into this whiteboard. So it's just a way to, or another way to interface with your information. Now, how do I get whiteboard set up? Let's go here and zoom in. As I mentioned, it's only available to backers. Eventually it will be free, but not yet. So if you are a backer, you'll be able to sign into your account here by settings. So I go to the top right there, settings, and then I go to my features. And you can see here where my email is and where it's blocked out at least. I have logged in there and then I switch the whiteboards feature on. Okay, so that's how I get whiteboard set up. And then on my left hand menu, so if I say TL to open up my left hand menu, I then get an added button for my whiteboards. And I can navigate there and then create a new whiteboard or go to an existing whiteboard. So let me quickly go back to this one where I was. Great. So that's my introduction. How do I get whiteboard set up? Okay. Now, how do I drive this thing? Now you'll see I'm still not getting into that little button that I'm clicking just yet. I will get there later. There's a reason for why I'm delaying it. And the main thing I want to show here is how you can navigate with hotkeys, shortcuts, and the different UI elements. Okay, first let me close this left sidebar again. So TL or escape TL. And you can see down at the bottom here that I've got a plus 
a minus and a zoom number. So I can zoom in there, zoom out there, or I can select the zoom here, or I can select an option and say potentially reset zoom. Okay, but that's very cumbersome. I don't really want to use those elements. So what I can do is use control. I can hold in control or command and then scroll in with my mouse and scroll out with my mouse. That's a good way to zoom in. I can also say control minus on the keyboard and control plus, and that's another way to zoom in and out. And then I can also navigate using the space bar. So I can say space bar and space bar and then drag and drop there. Or I can hold in my scroll button and drag and drop there. Okay, so those are a couple of the shortcuts. So now there's also a few other elements that I can use. And as you can see, it's brought up over here. So if I say control or shift one, I can zoom in to see everything. There's another shortcut. So if I select these two, I can say control shift one and we'll zoom in there. But it's also another command, which I don't know why it's like that, but I'm not using that one that much. I'm, I'm really just using my my zoom button on my or my scrolling button on my mouse. The other thing that I can use is this command palette over here. Now this select just enables me to select a couple of things, very intuitive. And I can also use the hand button over there to move, but really I want to be using spacebar or my so I say spacebar there or my scroll button. That's just typical intuitive features to use a visual interface. Okay. So what can I bring in slash create? What can I create bring in? Now, this is why I've held back on talking about these elements over here. If I hover over here, okay, I've just zoomed in a little bit more here. If I hover over there, you'll see that there's a little bullet point and a block, which means that I can bring in a block from anywhere in my database. If I go all the way to this left element here, over here, if I hover there, you can see that that's a page. So that would be the symbol for a page and the other one would be the symbol for a block. Now, the way that I got my blocks into my whiteboard is a couple of ways. I can toggle this, show the full page and then drag and drop this block over here. And then I can toggle that using that button there or this button over here. So I can bring in any blocks and I can bring in any pages. And the way that I do that is I have this button over here, which says add block or page, but really I want to be using my shortcuts. So three, let me bring in the same block above here, which is how do I get whiteboard set up? So I say three, and then I say, how do I get whiteboard set up? Boards set up. Okay. And then there, I just saw that it was, referring back to that block on that page. So I've now got this exact same block over there available here. And you can see there it's got a reference number, which shows that it's being referenced in two other places. So this is the first one. And then this is the second one over here. Um, how do I get whiteboard set up? That's the first thing I can bring in. I can bring in any block and I can bring in any page. And this is enabled by this um, plus button over there. The other thing that I can do is I can use freehand text. So I'm just quickly going to shift this to my other screen and I'm going to select that key over there and then I'm going to write here a little bit. So this is freehand. I want to circle that. Maybe I can use my fingers and I can say, what about this? Anyways, just another way that I can add some markup to this diagram. Okay, now I want to remove this. So then I can use erase button over here. So let me erase this and erase this. But I can also use a highlighter. So here's my highlighter over there. So the bottom element over here is a color selector. So if I click there, and I say, I want to make that blue. I can highlight this in blue and I can highlight that. And I can even put a highlight around there. Okay. And then as I did before, this is the eraser over here. And let me just erase everything over there. Okay. 
So now that I've used my, my pencil, let me change it back to the top screen. Okay, I'm also gonna change this color back to normal. The next thing that I can do is I can use different connectors. So I can either click there, which I did there now, or I could just use the shortcut C and I can draw arrows. So if I click in the middle there, it's automatically gonna draw from the side and I can connect that and I can then click there and connect that to there. So very easy to draw connectors. I can choose if I want to have arrows or no arrows on which side. Unfortunately, I can only draw straight connectors at the moment. Okay. Then the next thing that I can do is add text. So this is just simple text over here, simple text. And then I can use the interface that pops up to change the size. I can make it bold, I can make it italics, I can change the color. And then the final thing that I can insert from this menu here is a shape. So I can use R for rectangle or nine for shape, and I can simply input a shape there and maybe let me put another shape around here. And then I can right click and send this to back. So right click, move to back. Great. But now if I want to enter text into that shape, I simply hover there and then click on it. And then it allows me to enter text, enter some text, some text. Let me insert another rectangle. So another rectangle here. The other way to do it is to, if that you don't get that menu come up first time or that, that cursor, you can push enter and that will enable you to enter more text. The other thing that I can do is I can drag and drop images from my computer. So I'm going to drag in an image from my other screen here, which is the thumbnail from my previous video. And there we go. This is looking at how you use queries in LogSeq. So very easy to bring that in. Now, even cooler than this is you can bring in websites and YouTube videos. So I'm going to go to another browser on my other screen and I'm going to bring in my website over here and then copy and paste it. That's just simply control C, control V. And there's my website and it's embedded there. And then I'm going to go to the previous video that I did for Francesco. I'm going to copy that link and then I'm just going to paste it over here. Okay. So very cool, very easy to bring in different elements and lots of nice functionality. Okay, let me zoom in here and make sure that I've covered everything over here. So I'll move these texts, so just shift and selecting them. Shapes, text elements, blocks. Okay, cool, a good point here. Why would I use blocks or create blocks rather than doing these text elements over here? So one of the reasons that I'd want to create a block rather than use just simple text like that is because then that block is, I can reference it elsewhere in my database. So if I say, create a block, I say new block, this is more information that is now reusable elsewhere. So if I toggle this and I hypothetically, um, I'm in line now and I say control C, which copies the block reference over there. This is maybe a little bit advanced, but nonetheless, and then I say control V over there. I can now reference that information that I just created as a block elsewhere. And that's very nice to be able to create reusable data elements rather than these things which are not reusable. There are some trade-offs though. Sometimes it feels a bit hacky to create all the different blocks and it's quicker and easier just to create the text. Okay, let me move this element over there. And now I'm gonna talk about what can I use the whiteboard features for? Well, that really is up to you. But I think it's helpful to think about documenting processes and workflows. That's the first use case. I think all companies and all people will benefit from documenting their workflows visually so that you know where to go back to. A picture says a thousand words. Um, if you had to figure this out just by writing, sometimes it's a little bit more complex. The second one there is mind mapping. Again, just a form of sense making, moving different things around and yeah, being able to do it spatially helps me. It might help you too mood boards and idea gathering. So if you are planning a wedding or something like that and you want to get different pictures in, instead of using Pinterest, you might want to use LogSeq, an alternative to the mainstream. Then mapping out your writing. I've seen people who do writing, long form writing in LogSeq and Obsidian. And one way to map your characters and your scenes and the way different elements interact is to do it visually. And then finally, dashboards. So dashboards just creates a landing page for you to find your information more easily. 
Okay, let me quickly go and look at my, some of these different examples in my database. So I'm gonna say TL, I'm gonna open up my whiteboards. And I've got the demonstration database over here, but I have got, this is perhaps the one that I'm most uh, invested in at the moment. It's a workflow or a flow map for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is a sport that I've picked up again in the last few months. And I'm trying to remember which positions to take when I get into certain areas or certain positions. So for instance, if I have closed guard, which is just the position, I can then, well, I'm, I'm mapping for myself here that I should go do a sweep. I can either open my guard or I can do a triangle. But now there's a lot of information hidden behind this and I can very easily access that information by clicking on that toggle over there. And I can see here, what are the objectives? Break your opponent's posture. All these different things are very quickly referenceable for me and I can go and close that. The other nice thing in the whiteboard is that I've got here my index of different positions and let's see, I want to look at something about gi versus no gi. I just click on that element and it brings up that block. So it creates a new block for me that I can then move around in my whiteboard. And then it says the no gi principles, the head is important to attack, but not the most important. Okay, clearly lots of work still required to write out and flesh out some ideas, but a very useful flowchart for me personally. If I go back to my whiteboards, another one that I have been looking at is my homepage over here, which is a dashboard. Again, this is very rough, but it's just showing that the, you have to start somewhere. And basically I'm looking at my routines and rhythms on different intervals. So daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. So I'm building all of these out. I've started at the beginning of this year by using old data and I'm trying to just build a place where I can land and see what it is that I want to do. So for instance, this daily routine, wake up in the morning, remember this, whatever. Just something, somewhere where I can land and find the information very easily. Okay, so that's a dashboard and that's and it's a workflow or a flow approach. So I'm gonna go back to my demonstration whiteboard now and wrap up with my verdict on whiteboard. Whiteboards. Whiteboards at the end. And my verdict, it sounds negative, but there's still some room for improvement. Let's start with the, the bad. So hoping for some elbow connectors, which would make sense just to be able to diagram a little bit better. There's still some finicky UI elements. So for instance, when I'm copy and paste, let me go and find the little block that I'm referring to. Let me copy that block, copy and then paste it here. Okay, for some reason I didn't get the error, but let me do it again, copy, paste. If I do it without specifying a location, I get this error. So that's what's happening there. The better way, the way to avoid that is to say Alt, click and drag, but yeah, a few finicky little things like that. Ideally, I'd like to see more shapes as well to create different libraries. So for instance, if you are doing an entity relationship diagram, okay, that's a little bit maybe too advanced, but like a flow chart, a decision-making flow chart, it'd be really nice to see a diamond shape, which is typically used for decisions. Then the writing experience, it looked very smooth when I did this video now, and I'm very grateful for that, but I've had some experiences where it just slows down and it's a little bit laggy, and that's just because of the way that LogSeq is saving the files in the back end. The developers are aware of it, they are working on it, so hopefully a better writing experience in the end. Now, again, this last point, I've framed it a little bit negatively. I said it may not be best in class, but having your visual and written thinking in one tool is powerful. I think the interface and the UI is excellent. To be able to access your knowledge, move blocks around, write in a place, and then be able to reference that easily later, it really is a great experience. And particularly for the jujitsu, I feel like it's starting to help me a lot so that I'm not going between different videos or going between different notes and having to navigate. I can quickly open up the context and I can see as much detail as I want, or I can close it down and just see the different flows and think about or visualize how I want to go about the attack or the defense, however I'm thinking about it. So overall, the product is really helpful. The ability to integrate your knowledge visually and work with your knowledge visually and mind map it and, and do processes and stuff is really helpful for me. And I think it will be helpful for a lot of users going forward. So overall, whiteboards get a big thumbs up from me. Looking to integrate a visual component into my knowledge was something that I'd been holding out for. Using the tool feels quite frictionless now. It's nice to have everything in one place and just to drag and drop 
really is a fantastic user experience. So I just want to say thanks again to the Logseek developers first, who are continually releasing great developments in the product. And then also to the viewers, thank you so much for watching and to Francesco again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you also to everyone who has bought the course via Francesco's link. If you have bought the course, you will see there's now an updated section on whiteboards. And if you want to buy the course, you can find the affiliate link in the description below. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you.